beautiful. And I'm going to do a demonstration in the screencast of how to upload DIPs or dissemination information packages from Archivematica to Atom. So these uh, dissemination packages are the access equivalent of what you put in archival storage. Here we're looking at an Archivematica screen and I've just stored an archival information package or APE but I have a DIP or a dissemination information package that I wish to provide access to through uh, my archival management system. And in this case, we're using Atom or access to memory. So we have Atom open in another tab here too. Um, so the first thing that needs to happen for uh, you to be able to send a DIP from Archivematica to Atom is your Archivematica installation needs to know what uh, installation of Atom it's trying to communicate with. We go to the administration tab and to Atom DIP upload. You'll see that you can fill out credentials here. Uh, this isn't enough to uh, make the connection work. There's also some background uh, in, uh, information that needs to happen in the back end. Um, and you can check our installation docs to, uh, to see how to do that. In this case, we already have this Archivematica dashboard uh, communicating with this particular uh, instance of Atom. And we have a dip which is ready to go in the ingest tab. So we've uh, we've stored our ape and we've decided that we want to provide access to this material. So we're going to send the dip to Adam. First in Adam, we need to choose where to send the dip to. So uh, you can either create a new archival description by clicking add archival descriptions or you could browse to an, an existing archival description and we'll choose one that doesn't already have um, any digital objects attached to it. This one already does. So we'll choose this one. Um, so here we have an archival description in Atom. Um, the uh, way that we're going to communicate to Archivematica that this is the description that we want to send the digital objects to is we're going to use the slug. So that's the unique part of the URL up here. So I've highlighted it. It comes after the URL of your Atom site, and I'm going to copy it, so I've put it on my clipboard. Back in the Archivematica dashboard, under Upload DIP, I choose Upload DIP to Atom. I paste in the slug from the URL, and I click Upload. So this should just take a moment. This particular DIP only has two objects in it, so it's not very large. Once the upload dip job has completed successfully in Archivematica in Atom, we can reload the page and find that our two uh, digital objects are there. So each digital object has been given um, just a very basic um, archival description. Um, so if you wanted to add more detail here, you could. You could edit to add um, more information, like you could change the title, uh, which by default is, is simply the uh, name of the digital object. Um, the level of description is automatically set to item, but you could change that by editing the record if you wish. You could also add um, anything from whatever um, descriptive standard that you're using if you want to add subjects or so on. You'll see uh, when you're viewing the digital object that there's digital object metadata attached. So we have information about the object that is being displayed in Atom, including uh, its UUID, which came from Archivematica, and the UUID of the ape. So if in the future you wanted to find the AIP that this digital object belongs to, you could use that information to search your Archivematica dashboard. You can choose in Atom whether or not to display this metadata to the public. Some people um, don't choose to do that, or you can choose to leave it public. It's up to you. So this is a basic dip upload procedure from Archivematica to Atom. It's existed in several versions now of, of uh, both pieces of software. So any recent version that you're using of um, either piece of software will, will work for this workflow. But we've introduced a new, uh, more sophisticated workflow in version 1.5 of Archivematica, which requires version 2.2 or higher of Atom. So um, this Atom instance that we're looking at, this is version 2.2. This Archivematica dashboard is uh, version 1.5. And what we're going to do is we're going to create a dip which has a hierarchy. So we're going to assign levels of description or do basic arrangement and description tasks uh, within Archivematica. 
And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to assign levels of description. So we're going to say uh, particularly what level of description we want our digital objects to have and whether we want them to belong to another series or a subseries or so on. Levels of description in Atom are managed in a taxonomy. So if you go to manage taxonomies, you'll find uh, all of the taxonomies listed here. So we'll find our way to levels of description. And uh, here you can see that the current levels of description available to this Atom uh, installation are part, collection, item, series, font, subseries, subfont, and file. So suppose I wanted to have sub subseries available. I could add that as a level of description. Click create. And now when we see the, the level of description taxonomy, sub sub series is an option along with the rest of the terms that were already there. So we need Archivematica to understand these levels of description in order to do this, um, to make this bit with a hierarchy to it. So in the Archivematica dashboard, if we go to administration and then Atom dip upload, you'll see this uh, button called levels of description. And here you can um, fetch from Atom. So uh, if we want to make sure that our levels of description in Archivematica are up to date with what exists in Atom, we click fetch from Atom. And uh, now we can see that we have sub sub series as well as sub series and exactly the same taxonomy between Atom and Archivematica. So um, I have already uh, created a transfer that we're going to use for this purpose. Um, what you need to do is create a transfer in Archivematica and send it to the backlog. That's the way that we're going to get access to the material and, and assign our levels of description and, and do our arrangement and description. So I've called a, um, a transfer photo collection and we'll search the backlog for that. Here it is. So if we navigate through the transfer, we can see that we have uh, 10 uh, digital objects that we can arrange and describe. And uh, you can do this in a couple different ways. You can just pull the entire transfer over to arrange if you want, or over and arrange. We can make our own, um, our own descriptions by clicking add directory. So uh, we'll just call this sample collection. And within sample collection, maybe we have um, photos of subject one, and maybe another directory called photos of subject two. That directory, I accidentally didn't create it within the top level directory, so I'm just going to click and drag it in so that they're both children of the top level directory, and we can keep adding children if we want. Um, So I've just called it sample subdirectory. So now we can click and drag our digital objects into the directories that we choose. So maybe we have a couple things that go into subject one, a couple things that go into subject two, and uh, maybe we also want to put something, uh, oh, I've already put something inside the subdirectory, so I'll put another one inside subject two. So, um, now what we can do is we can uh, create our hierarchy by using the edit metadata button. So if I click on the top level directory and I want to give it a level of description, I click edit metadata. I choose the level of description and you can see this is the same taxonomy that we just had. So I want to call this top level a collection. And maybe within that, the next levels of directory, I want to call them series. Adam and Archivematica, they have no um, sense of the hierarchy of this taxonomy. So as archivists, we all kind of understand that a series is a, a, a smaller level of description than a collection, but you could actually make these anything that you want. It doesn't, uh, it, it doesn't really matter. Um, so you, it's quite flexible in that way. And maybe this uh, internal directory, perhaps I want to call that a uh, file. So if I don't um, 
assign any level of, of description to the actual objects within all of these uh, directories. They'll just be understood as items to, um, to Adam. But if I wanted to, again, I could edit the metadata. So maybe these two items are actually both part of the same uh, intellectual item. So I'm going to call them both parts. Once I've done all of the arrangement description that I want to do, I click on the top level directory and I click create zip. There's a couple of just confirmation steps just to make sure that you've created the zip that you wanted to create. And then we approve the zip creation. And now it's going to run through um, its microservices running up to the normalization point. Meanwhile, in Atom, we can go and create the description that we want to send this material to. So I'll just click on Add Archival Descriptions. In this particular installation of Atom, we're using ISAD-G. Um, so it shows us which, um, which fields are mandatory according to ISAD-G, but Atom will allow us to create a sample that um, just has uh, a title or an identifier. So just for demonstration purposes, that's what we'll do. So we've made a, uh, a, an archival description called sample. Back in the Archivematica dashboard, we're ready to choose a normalization path. You have to make sure um, if you want to create a diff, you normalize uh, for access. So either you can just normalize the files for access or you can normalize for both preservation and access. That's what I'll choose. So now Archivematica is going to create an AIP and also a diff. So it's just running through its final microservices before we have an, an ape and a dip to work with. And uh, before we do anything with either the dip or the ape, uh, I'm going to show you uh, by reviewing the ape in the METS file um, what, uh, what part of the METS file is going to be understood by Adam to create this hierarchy. So if we click review beside store ape, and we find our uh, sample collection that we just made, and we click on the METS file, then it opens it up in screen. And if you go down to the very bottom, the difference between uh, this METS file and a typical Archivematica METS file is the addition of a new struct map. So Archivematica always has one struct map or structural map that shows the physical um, uh, structure of the AIP that you're storing. In this workflow, it's created a new one that's called um, hierarchical and it's of a logical type. So this is the way that all of these directories of objects are understood to have a level of description. And in some cases, like here, this um, actual item that we get, uh, our digital object that we gave a level of description of part, it's under, uh, it is understood to um, have a level of description as well. So it's this part of the METS file that is going to be interpreted by Adam to create the levels of description that we want. Back in the Archivematica dashboard, we should always store the ape before you do anything with the dip. It's not technically required, but it's a best practice that we always recommend. So once my ape is stored, I'm going to send the dip to Adam, and I'm going to do that by taking the slug from the URL of the archival description in Adam. This could have been an existing description, but I chose to send it to a new description that I made and I choose Upload to Atom, and I paste in the slug. So that should just take a minute or so. And once it's complete, we'll reload the page in Atom. And here we have our um, archival, our digital objects with our archival descriptions. So you can see that this, um, this uh, description that I made that I called sample and I didn't give it any other information, it's now understood to be a collection. If uh, you click on the series below, you can see that uh, here in uh, photos of subject one series, we have two parts, two digital objects, which make up some intellectual whole. And we also have our other series, which within it 
has a couple of items and a file which has an item itself. So um, we, uh, we hope that you're interested in trying out this workflow for yourself. And as always, if you have any questions for us about either our Prismatica or Atom, then please get in touch with us on our user forums. Thank you so much.